Welcome to Python 3 Beginner 2, Variables and Data Structures. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. Variables are one of the most important parts of programming. Variables allow us to store data. We can store different values like integers, real numbers, booleans, strings, or more complex data structures like lists or dictionaries. Python reserves space on our computer for a value when a variable is declared. To create a variable, we write a variable name and then assign it a value with the equal sign. So let's take the example of a variable called myNumber and we'll set it to the value 3. So over in our Python interpreter, we can call the vari variable name myNumber and make it equals 3. And that'll create a variable called myNumber and set it to the value 3. So now if we print open bracket, and our variable name, so my number, close bracket, we'll see that it outputs the value 3, which is stored inside my number. Now we can change the value that my number holds by using the exact same uh, assignment that we did to create it. So my number equals, and we'll make it, we'll change the value it holds to 10. And now if we print out my number again, we see it now holds the value 10. Now this is pretty cool, but it's not very powerful yet. So let's have a look at some of the arithmetic math that we can do in Python. So Python allows for seven basic arithmetic operators. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus, exponent, and floor division. So modulus is dividing and the remainder. Exponent is to the power of and floor division is dividing and rounding down. Okay, so let's have a look at some of these operators. So we come back over to our interpreter. Let's set our my number variable to equal 10 plus 90. So this will add 10 to 90 and it will set the result into our my number variable. So now if we print out my number, we can see it holds the value 100. So the left hand side of the equal sign will be the result of the right hand side. So now let's subtract 50. So what we can do is we can subtract 50 from my number's current value by using the my number variable. So my number equals my number's current value minus 50. And now if we print out my number, we can see that it now equals 50. So 100 minus 50 equals 50. Okay, so we can also do this, do the same thing using a shortcut. So we can type my number, so our variable my number, minus equals 50. So what this does it, is it says, I want to minus 50 from my number, and then set my, num my, my number to equal the result. So if we hit enter and we print out my number again, we see we get the value zero. So it has done the exact same thing as the previous line. So this shortcut works for, for all of the arithmetic operators in Python. So we have the plus equals, the minus equals, the times equals, divide equals, mod equals, exponent equals, float division equals. A link to a list of operators will be in the description. So let's try out the multiply operator and then we'll follow it up with the shorthand divide operator. So let's set my number to equal 11 times 11. Now the result of 11 times 11 is now stored in my number and we can see that if we print out my number. So it's 121. Now let's use the shorthand divide on our my number variable. So my number divide equals 50. So we're going to divide 121 by 50. So you hit enter. And if we now print out our my number variable, we can see it has the value 2.42, which is 121 divided by 50. Cool. So now let's look at some more complex variable types in Python. So we have strings. The string variable is basically text. They, surround, they are surrounded with either double quotes or single quotes. 
In Python 3, strings are in Unicode, so they can su support emoticons and characters from other languages. Let's just make a simple text variable called text. We'll surround the string in quotes. Okay, so we come across, let's call our variable text, and we're going to make it equal, open quotes, hello world, close quotes, and we hit enter. Now if we print our text variable, text, then we can see we get the output hello world, and it doesn't have the quotes. This is because this, the quotes is purely to tell that it is a string. Strings are that easy in Python. Of course, there is more we can do with strings, however, that will be covered at another time. Even more complex variables are lists. Lists enable us to store an array of data. This is a very friendly uh, way to store multiple, um, multiple values inside one variable in Python, and it is very simple to use. To create a list, we declare it with the square brackets and then we can add to the list with the dot append function. So let's say the list nums dot append and we'll give it the value 21. So we're storing 20, the integer 21 inside nums. And then we can print the list with the print function. So let's go, out, let's go try it out. So if we come over to our interpreter and we want to create a list called nums. And make that equal to square brackets. That will create a list. Now we can add values to that list. So nums.append, open brackets, and we'll give it the value 21, close brackets. Hit enter, and we've added the value 21 to our nums list. So nums.append, open brackets, and let's say 40.5, close brackets. And that is stored 40.5 into the nums list. And let's store one more thing. So nums.append, open brackets, and this time let's store a string. So open quotes, I'm not a number. Close quotes, close brackets. So as you can see, we can store multiple different types of variables inside lists. So let's print out our list. So print, open bracket, nums, close bracket. And as you can see, we get our list out of 21, 40.5, and I'm not a number. Cool. You can also add values into the list when we declare it. So if we go nums equals open square brackets, and let's give it the values 1000, 2000, and 3000. And each, each new uh, value is separated by a comma and then we close it off with our square brackets. Now if we print nums again, we can see that the values it holds is 1000, 2000, and 3000. It's just that simple. Lists support many other functionalities, but again, that will be covered in a late, in another uh, at another time. Lastly, we have dictionaries. Dictionaries work similar to lists, however it is stored in a hash table of values and keys. While constructing a dictionary, we use the colon to separate a key from a value. So let's have a quick look at a dictionary. So let's create a dictionary called services. So services equals, and we open up with curly braces this time, and we need to give a string key. So let's give string FTP, close quotes, colon, and we're going to give it the value 21. Now we use comma to separate that item. And now let's open a string again. We'll do SSH, close quotes. And we use colon, and we're going to give SSH the value 22. Comma, open quotes. And let's do SMTP, close quotes, colon. And we're going to give that the value 25. Now comma again, and we'll add our last value into our dictionary open quotes, HTTP, close quotes, colon, 80. And that is the value we give to HTTP. Now we can close off our dictionary with the curly brace, the close curly brace, and we hit enter. And we have saved a whole dictionary with uh, um, 
values FTP, SSH, SMTP, and HTTP. And we can print out our dictionary. So print open bracket services close brackets. And if we print it out, we see we've got the key FTP equals 21, ST, SMTP equals 25, SSH equals 22, and HTTP equals 80. Okay. This concludes our look at variables in Python. Don't fear if you don't remember all of this. You can easily come back, easily come back and rewatch this video to consolidate all of the information. If you have any questions and you can't find an answer after a quick Google search, feel free to leave it in the comments. Next, we'll be covering input and output. Thanks for watching.